I am Sam Aboyeji, the general overseer of the First Square Gospel Church in Nigeria. And I'm excited that you are part of this edition of Time of Divine Help. I know that testimonies have been pouring in from viewers from all over. Right now, I don't want you to enjoy this telecast alone. Please invite your friends, your neighbors, members of your family to come sit with you as we get soaked in God's word. Remember, Psalm 107 verse 20 says, He sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. See you at the end of the telecast. God bless you. The grace of God, as you have heard already, is our mission month. And that's why our theme for this month is Abundant Harvest. What did I call it? Abundant Harvest. Abundant Harvest. That's our theme. But this morning, by the grace of God, I'm bringing the word on the urgency of the Abundant Harvest. The urgency of the Abundant Harvest. It is urgent. The call for harvest is urgent. I'm reading three scriptures, Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send laborers into his harvest. That's the first scripture. And very quickly, I'm reading the second one. And that is found in Luke chapter 10, verse 2. Therefore he said unto them, The harvest truly is great. But the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. You know what the Bible says? It's the out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth is established. I'm going to put a third one now. In John chapter 4, verse 35. Do not say, there are still four months. To the harvest, behold, I say unto you, lift up up your eyes and look at the fields for they are already white for harvest. And he said, he that reapeth receiveth wages. How many of you want God to pay us wages? You know, God's wages they are not a measure. When God wants to pay you, he pay you big. And as you engage in harvest, you can be sure of your wages. And he that reapeth, receiveth wages. This morning, we'll be emphasizing on the urgency of the harvest. And let me start by telling us that how many of us desire to know what is the uppermost thing in the heart of God? What is God's number one priority? If we desire to know what is his number one priority, then this month you have to listen very well to what God has to say. To what he has to say. God has a priority. And that priority that he has in mind is harvest. Have you ever wondered why didn't God say uh, the, the sowing is plenty? Have you ever wondered? He didn't say the sowing is plenty and the laborers are few. It's the harvest that is plenty. And you know the reason? The reason is because the age we are in, the harvest is already ripe. You know, I, 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 if you have been to the farm before, if you are planted and then the time of harvest comes, nothing stops you from going for the harvest. Nothing. Because you know if you don't harvest it, what will happen? It will spoil. The harvest will spoil. And that's why it is urgent for us as a people and as a church to take the issue of harvest very, very seriously. The priority of the harvest, that's what I'm going to discuss this morning and then I'll discuss the prayer for the harvest. The priority of the harvest there is no doubt about it. Jesus used every opportunity to reveal the purpose of existence of the church. The only reason the church still exists on earth is because of the harvest. Because the church exists to propagate itself. 
That's the whole essence. That's why in the book of Luke he said, we having been delivered from the hand of our enemies shall serve him without fear, with holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. It would have been so wonderful if the day somebody got born again just goes to heaven. Don't you think it would be very fine? A man got born again in church and he, he used to live a very rough life to the extent that every day he has to buy Tom Tom and put in his mouth so that the wife would not know he was drunk. That was how rough his life is. Every weekend, the wife has to go and trace him. Because once it's Friday night, the wife knows that by Saturday morning, you don't know where you will find him. So the wife has to be calling around. Have you seen my husband? Have you seen my husband? That was how rough his life was. But only one encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And this man was changed in a service. And when the service was over, everybody had gone home. This man sat in the church. He sat in the church. And the ushers came to him and said, we want to lock the door and the windows. Are you not going home? He said, no, I'm not going anywhere. I want to die here so that I go to heaven straight. He said, because I'm afraid if I step out there, they will take me back to hell. He was so enwrapped with the experience of heaven after his born again experience that he never wanted to have anything to do with this world. That is what God will have done. But the only reason he didn't do it is because you are needed here to propagate the gospel. If you have found it relevant, you have found it good for your life, you need to be here to do that work. And that is the only thing that is priority as far as God is concerned. In John 8, 29, we're told, Jesus said, my father lost me. He who sent me has not left me. The Father is always with me because I do always only those things that please him. If you are a child of God and you want to be in the pleasure book of God, the only thing you can do that can make you to be at peace with God all the time, that will make you to be one of God's favorites all the time, is for you to ensure that all the time you do this one thing. Let your contribution anywhere, your, the priority of your contribution be for the progress and the advancement of the kingdom. I used to serve with a ministry and um, one prayer we pray every morning. Every morning is a constant prayer request. We say, Lord, today, today, help us to do something to contribute to the enlargement of your kingdom on earth. That's the only reason we are here. The day you stopped contributing to the enlargement of kingdom here on earth, your time is over. I love I loved the testimony of, of, of Simon. The Bible said that that man, it had been revealed to him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death until he has seen the lost Christ. It is a priority because it is the number one vision of God. It is the number one priority of God. And what moves God should move you as a child of God. If you are going to have any vision at all, that's why Jesus had to redirect the vision of his disciples. He said, look unto the fields, for they are white unto harvest. As a human being, you are likely to be drawn to wherever you place your attention. Look unto the fields. That's talking about vision. Look unto the fields. It is principally to perpetrate himself. He came here alone. You know, missions and evangelism is God's number one business of the church. There is no other business we've been given here. Every other one we are doing, they are just ancillaries. If you are in drama group, if your drama does not bring souls to Christ, close it down. If you are in music ministry, if it doesn't bring souls to Christ, close it down. If you are running house fellowship and it doesn't bring people to Christ, close it down. Anything you are engaged in and does not fit in to the propagation of the gospel, it is time to close it down. Because that is the only thing that will interest God. Every other thing, they are ancillaries. If you watch the way the church is structured, every other thing we're doing is to achieve that ultimate goal of enlarging the kingdom. And I pray God will use you to enlarge his kingdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As at, as at today, it is recorded that over 100,000 people are saved daily all over the world. 
But you see, somebody will have sat down and said, oh, is that not enough? Because I'm discussing now why it should be a priority. Remember, now I told you it's the urgency of the abundant harvest. Why should it be a priority? With 100 souls saved per day. But listen to me very well. Not just that. It's also being reckoned that five to six years, in five to six years, about one to four million churches, about 1.4 million churches are planted within the last five to six years. And I'm glad to announce to you that I'm sure Foursquare Nigeria is part of that, that part of that statistics. Of 1.4 million churches planted all over the world with 250 million souls being brought to the kingdom. This morning I'm here to challenge you that if you think you are doing anything, you haven't started at all. We have not started at all. The harvest is plenteous and the laborers are few. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest that we send laborers into his harvest. Jesus had called 12 men to be with him and then he moved them to 70 and then to 120 and then from 120 to 3,000 and from 3,000 finally to 5,000 people. And then on and on and on until today we are 2.4 billion. If they had stopped, where do you think we'll be today? The greatest evil anybody can do to the church of Jesus Christ as a Christian is to stop this process from going on. It has to go on. But that's the only way we can propagate this gospel. That's the only way that we can, we can rescue the harvest that's already spoiling. Robert Spear said, a person is duty bound either to propagate his religion or change it. If Christ has not done you well, it's better for you to keep quiet and, and move out. But if he has done you well, necessity is laid on you. Paul said, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Necessity is laid on me. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. As a child of God, your number one priority should be the preaching of the gospel. Should be the preaching of the gospel. You know, 75 to 90 percent of people came to church because someone invited them. That's the truth. It's been confirmed. Either a neighbor, a relative, a friend, an uncle invited them. That's how they got to church. You check. How did you enter church? How did you get to know Christ? There was somebody who made this his or her duty to ensure that you are born again. And I ask you the question, how many people have you been able to bring to Christ? How many people have you been able to bring to Christ? It's urgent because the end is near. I don't think I need to tell you that. COVID-19 was a dress rehearsal. It was a dress rehearsal because with COVID-19, we have all now known that it is possible to shut down the whole world and nothing will move. Before, if somebody had said it before, in fact, when some of us read it in the book of Revelation, we begin to think, is it possible? But I'm sure you believe that word much more now. That it's possible to shut down New York, shut down London, shut down everywhere, shut down Rome, shut down Paris, and nothing will change. That's to show us that the day that that day will come and everything will shut down, it will be like, uh, oh, we have seen it before. The end is very close. That's why the harvest is a priority. It is therefore our duty to tell others what Christ means to us. I love a, I love a, a particular tribe in Nigeria. When they are selling drugs and they bring it to you, they tell you, I have used it before, so it has worked for me. Come and take it. That's why the woman of Samaria was the most effective evangelist I've ever read about in the Bible. That woman of Samaria, she had not read Genesis to Revelation. She didn't go to Bible school. Or did you read it there that she went to seminary? All that she was saying, she didn't even know Bible. All that she was saying is, come and see a man who told me all that I ever did. She didn't go anywhere. She didn't read the Bible. Not to talk of us who have the Bible. We have encyclopedia of the Bible. We have Bible commentary. We have a Bible explanation. We have, in fact, some of us, we have translation of the Bible in 20 places. When we pick a verse, we, we expand it. 
This woman does not have one Bible. And yet, she was able to move a whole city. Come and see a man who told me all that I ever did. And that's the gospel. The gospel, in short, is good news. Tell me what you have experienced. And that's what the Lord wants us to do because the, the, the issue is urgent. If you look at the Bible, in John chapter 1, verse 42, you see a story of these people who started one-on-one -on -one witnessing. Andrew was introduced to Jesus by John the Baptist. You know, John the Baptist was actually the main man who brought the gospel. And Andrew was introduced to Jesus by John the Baptist. And when he told him, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the whole world. And thereafter, Andrew went to his brother, Simon Peter, who eventually became, you know, one of the closest to the Lord Jesus. And he told him, we have found the Messiah. If there is anything this world is looking for now, it is the Messiah. See the way things are collapsing. See the way wickedness is raining. The world needs a Messiah. And you have the information. Why should you hold it? Why should you keep it? It's urgent. And my prayer for every one of us is that God will not take us as being guilty for not speaking, for not preaching the gospel in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's an hungry war in that need of the gospel. Before we used to have missionaries from America, from Europe, I think you still remember. America, Europe, they are the ones sending missionaries to us. Did you hear today? We are talking about Wamco. For your information, most of, the, most of the mission work that are done in Africa, as far as first square is concerned, were done by Nigeria. In those days, we used to wait for Yibo to come and preach to us. But do you know the projection? The projection is that by 2030, 70% of missionaries all over the world will not be from any of those countries. 70% will be from other parts of the world. That's to tell you that, you know, they call it mis missionary shift. There's a missionary shift. And if God in heaven is already looking in that direction, who is he looking at? He's looking at you and me. Like I was telling some people last week, I said, if they say Africa, where do you think they are saying? It's Nigeria. It's Nigeria. When they even say Nigeria, where do you think they are saying? It's Lagos. It's Lagos. So that's why you see that you are at the center of this program of God. If God already gave it as an idea to some people that in 2030, which is just in nine years' time, that 70% of missionaries will no longer be from where we used to, see, to have them from. And I'm sure you know. Those of you who are exposed enough, you will know that it's not even news. Because as of today, we're actually the ones sending missionaries to them. So where were you to look up to? That gate has been closed. And that's why I think that by the special grace of God as a church, we are creating more avenues for the preaching of the gospel. In line with Paul's admonition, in 1 Corinthians 9, 20, say, to the weak, I became weak that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. By all means save some. By all means save some. So if you see us playing modern music, it's not because it is a priority. It's because so that we can gain some. If you hear us saying we are prioritizing youth, it's not because we just like the way youth behave. No. It's because we have realized that the population of Nigeria as of today has over 60% of them as youth. So if you, are, if you are in business and you want to sell, when you come to Nigeria, what type of product will you sell? When 60, 70% are young people. Is that, not, is that not a market? So when they say there's market in Nigeria, what do you think they are talking about? It's a market for you to look at the kind of thing that they bring into this country. There are things that are appealing to young people. You cannot see anybody from anywhere in the world bring into this country anything that will appeal to the elderly because they know that they will lose. They can't make money. 
And what we are talking about is more valuable than money. He said, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? God of heaven and earth is interested in the soul of a man. That's why he told us in his war. He said, there is joy in heaven over one soul. Over one soul. Just one soul that repents. And I pray that God will find you faithful. He will find you ready to fulfill the great commission. My prayer for you is that when it comes to the great commission, you will not be found wanting. I say you will not be found wanting. I say you will not be found wanting. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The preaching of the gospel brings down the power of God. Today, there is a reduction in the manifestation of the power of God. Not because God's power has reduced. At least I know from Hebrews 13:8 that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So his power is as ever as it used to be. The power has not reduced at all. But what has reduced? The preaching of the gospel. Because Romans 1.16, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Because it is the power of God unto salvation. It is the power of God unto salvation. Many, many years ago, even before we became sophisticated like this, I still remember as a child how, how, uh, how uh, people like Baba and Yoda used to drop tracks. They used to drop tracks through helicopter. And that attracted a lot of young people. Tracks were dropped from heaven. You would think it's God that sent you a message, letter from heaven. They will fly aeroplane. They will fly chopper all over the country and be dropping tracks. Tracks. You know that time, many of us didn't know how, 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 how expensive it is to even use a plane. Today, how many planes are being used to distribute tracks? Now that the church is blessed, this should be the direction we should take our blessing to. Because that's the priority of God. It's not showmanship. What God wants is that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. That's what the Bible says. Look at it. Very clearly in Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. By all means, save some. By all means, save some. Thank God for, for, for this church. You know, before I came here, I've heard a lot about this church, particularly our area of external ministries, our area of international missions, our support to other churches, our missionaries in the north, our support to them. If there is any time to increase that support, it is now. Because the gospel is more urgent now than ever. If there's any time to spend more for the preaching of the gospel, it is now. And we're going to look at the prayer. We have looked at the reason why it's a priority. Let's look at the prayer. Say, pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers into his harvest. That's the second point I want us to look at. But well, look at why it is a priority. Now, why do we need to pray? You see, when I was, <laughs> there was a time I was involved in, in a building of a house. And there's a peculiarity about laborers. I don't know how many of you know. Laborers, there's what they call finish and go. Finish and go. Finish and go means when a laborer comes to site, you give him a work. And you tell him how much you pay him. His only concern is how to finish. In fact, if you are not careful, he will not do it the way you want him to do because his target is to finish. So it's you who put eye to ensure that he does what you want. He's, what, the only thing he's hearing is here. He's finished and go. That is why Jesus said, pray ye the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into his harvest. Because the stage we are now with the gospel is finish and go. It's finish and go. It's so urgent that it's finish and go. Just last year, 
in, uh, in, in, in the international church, they had this theme, the unfinished task. And they still have a group of people who are pursuing it. What is the unfinished task? It is the preaching of the gospel. That's why I say pray. Because you cannot do it by your strength. You cannot do it by your power. Every manifestation of God's power that brings great adverse of souls is backed up by consistent and strong prayers. The Holy Ghost didn't come until they prayed fervently. The power of God did not come down until they prayed fervently. In Acts 13 verse 2, he said, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate unto me Paul and Barnabas. Let me inform you of something today. Anytime you pray to the extent that the Holy Ghost said, nothing can change it. That's why that man, he was very old and everybody was expecting him to die. The man said, no. The Holy Ghost has spoken to me that I will not die until I see Jesus Christ. So that was an exceptional case. God would say, when death comes, you should go. The man said, no death until I see Jesus. And the day he handled the baby Jesus, the Bible says he announced to everybody, now let your servant depart in peace. According to your word, that is the power of prayer and revelation. When you pray enough, God will release things to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. When you pray strong enough, you will access the throne of God. Prayer itself is a work. That's why the apostle said in Acts chapter 6 verse 4, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the war. Pastor Kola was announcing to us that tomorrow we have a mission prayer. I know we've been holding it every Monday, but when I see the statistics, 30, 20, in this big church, in this big church, if I say prayer for breakthrough now, this place will be flooded. In fact, people who don't come to this church, they will come. But the one that concerns God is the one we are ignoring. Do you know all these other things that we are, we are pursuing? They end here. You can't take any out of here. I love that statement by Paul the Apostle. Say, For we brought nothing to this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. One man had Ferrari and he said they should bury him with it. So they, they obeyed him and they buried him with the Ferrari. By the following day, those who are more clever than him, they came and removed the Ferrari. It is certain you can take nothing out. You know, when he was talking about bringing, he said, for we brought. It's a, it's a, it's a bigger language. He's saying that if it is possible to have brought, you will have brought. But you cannot bring anything to this world. Then he now said, it is certain that you cannot take. You know, when they say take, it, it's something you can just pick with your hand. <laughs> you can take nothing out. That's why we must pray. Pray for the Lord of the harvest to give us inspiration. To give us inspiration to be involved. Pray for more people to invest their life into preaching the gospel. That's the first prayer point I want you to pray. Pray that more people will be ready to invest their lives preaching the gospel. This job is enormous. This job is big. It's enormous. There is need for more laborers. If you cannot go yourself, pray that God will send laborers into his harvest. And what do I mean by you cannot go yourself? The field is all around you. Where you work, where you trade. Everywhere you are, the field is there. Everywhere you are, the field is there. A man of God was sharing a testimony. I was listening to him. He said he entered the plane. Business class. And this man, by the grace of God, is a prophet. He said, as I settled down in the business class, I didn't know that the man sitting across me, God wants to save him. He said, and the Lord began to reveal his secrets to me. He said, then I, I just introduced myself to him after I had prayed. And the man also introduced himself to him. And he asked the man, do you know so, 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 and so? He mentioned the name. And the man was shocked. Because that name he mentioned is the girlfriend that has been creating problem in their home. He said, the man said, can we go to the back 
of the aircraft to talk about this. And they went to the back of the aircraft. By the time they were coming back, it's already a safe soul. But for that man to have received a message for that man, it means he has a body for souls. That's why God revealed it to him. God will only reveal things to us when he knows we will be prepared to obey him. If he has revealed your will to us and you didn't obey, why are you asking for more? The one he revealed the other day, have you obeyed it? God's priority is the salvation of souls. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers into his harvest. People like D.L. Modi, they showed us the way. D.L. Modi said, <laughs> my business is to preach the gospel. I only mend shoes to pay my bill. <laughs> my number one business is to preach the gospel. But I have to mend shoes so that I can pay my bill. I'm mending shoes not to acquire wealth. I'm mending shoes not to be the number one richest man in Africa. I'm mending shoes to pay my bills. My number one business is to preach the gospel. That's the challenge to us in praying for more laborers. There's need for more born again, spirit filled men and women to devote more time and energy to the preaching of the gospel. You know, James L. Craft, I think I've shared this story with you before. After 1903, he started a business with $65 only. And he had a horse. And this man will labor and labor and labor. He's a child of God, though. He will labor and labor and labor. At the end of the day, nothing. Nothing. So one day, God was merciful to him. As I know God will be merciful to so many of us today. Because we have neglected what we are supposed to do first. God was merciful to him as he was there. Uh, he was there wondering how come. After all, he said, I'll be the head and not the tail. After all, he said, whatsoever I lay my hands on to do, it shall prosper. Abi, all those promises, are they not correct? So the man was wondering, why are they not working for me? And then the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, Craft, how much of your time and resources do you spend for God? He said he was challenged immediately. He went and enrolled in the Sunday school and immediately became the GSS of the Sunday school in his, in his church. Not only that, they quickly grabbed him and made him a board of trustees member of the seminary of the church. And the man said, as soon as those two things were done, by 1909, if you read history, Kraft Foods became so popular in America that it appears as if he's the only one selling. Now, the question is, what was happening before? What was happening before is that if you don't do God's own, God is not obliged to do your own. That's the truth. Not that he left his business. He didn't leave it. Dear Moody never stopped mending shoes. But he ensured that he devoted more time to the things of God. One man of God put it very well. He said, in the, in the giving of your time to God's business, just tight your time. Tight your time. What is the tight of uh, one day? The tight of one day is two and a half hours. Is it? Am I right? Eh? Ah, you are not answering me. Oh. It's two and a half hours. Let me ask you. When life did you spend two and a half hours for God in a day? Our time. Let's pray for more people to devote their time to the preaching of the gospel. Let's pray for more people to invest their resources in the preaching of the gospel. I came across a statistics and I was shivering. He said the church in the world has hundred times the resources we need to evangelize the world. That is only we are not deploring it. I was shocked. He said the resources are there. Hundred times. So when we are praying and say, God, bring money. God will just be laughing in heaven. Because among those who are praying, the money to do the work we are praying for is in their account. That's why those evangelists, 
You know, even though some, sometimes we try to condemn them. They say, everybody, come and empty your purse. Come and empty your account here. Hundred times the resources we need are available in the church. Is it not true? In Nigeria today, what is the shout of our people? That the church is too rich. Abi, didn't you hear it? That's what they are saying. Well, thank God for those men of God that God has blessed. They are using it rightly for the enlargement of the kingdom. So wherever we find ourselves, our priority should be to not just invest in the kingdom, but to pray that there will be more people who are ready to invest in the kingdom. You know, this, this James Aircraft, not just that he was made GSS, not just that he became a board of trustees member in his church, he also, you know what he did? He set aside 25% of his income for the progress of the gospel. And you know, such people, they'll be blessed. I pray you will join such people in the name of Jesus. On a personal note, I know a man of God. I know he's a child of God. Who tells me, I pay my tithes and I give for mission. He said, but anything that comes to me as income, outside my normal income, say 50% of it is for mission. 50%. He said, once I receive gift, this is not my salary. He said, because if they don't give me, can I go and uh, challenge them? It's God that sent it. He said, it's outside my salary. Anything outside my salary, he said, I have a separate account for it. 50% of it, I spend it on mission. And the man has helped me a lot. When I was in worry, he helped me a lot. There was a time I called him. I said, my people in the river and mission, they are suffering. We can't pay them. He just called me one day. He said, every month, this is the amount I'm sending. So when we got discussing, and I said, you know what? My covenant with God is that anything that comes as extra, 50% of it is for mission work. Those are the people that are making the work to move ahead. Because in those days, they say money is the bicycle of the gospel. Can, where can you ride bicycle to now? I ask you the question. Where can you ride bicycle to? If not, only for, if not only for exercise. You can't ride bicycle anywhere. The minimum you can take is Okada. And even Okada is dangerous. That's why we should rather say money is the chopper of the gospel. To make the gospel to fly. Because now we are in the long term where God expects us to take the gospel to the uttermost part of the earth. In those days when money was the bicycle of the gospel, it was the time when they were using money to go to Jerusalem and go to Samaria. Those were closer places. But if you want to get to the uttermost part of the earth, you can't use bicycle, my friend. You got to get something stronger, something faster. And that's the challenge God is giving us. If you are going to give money, please, and let us pray that the God of heaven and earth we send more people, kingdom investors, kingdom partners. He will send it to his kingdom so that this work will not suffer resources. One of my beliefs as a minister of God is that God's work can never lack resources. I don't believe it, that God's work will lack resources. God is too big to beg. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It's too big to beg. In the book of Psalms, he said, I own the sheep on a thousand years. Say, if I were hungry, I would not call you. It's too big to beg. But when he says, I've created opportunity for you to give, it is for your own benefit. I haven't seen one person who is committed to kingdom investments whose life was not transformed. There's nobody. All the people I know who are committed to kingdom investment on a regular basis, they continue to move up. That's why by the special grace of God, every October, you know, it's been done in this church, but we are going to extend it. It's not only going to be restricted here because I know what people used to benefit in those when we're doing it consistently. One man came to me. He said, ah, do you people have too much money? You are not asking us to bring money again for mission. I said, sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Bring it. Bring it. He said, because I know that every year when I committed to giving mission, by next year, I'm not at the same level. 
But next year, I'm not at the same level. Why? Because God needs more resources. If he's sure that you are going to commit the resources to the propagation of the gospel and the expansion of his kingdom, if you are the one, would you give that person more? Will you go and give those who will collect and take? Who will pocket it? It is for our own good. You know, Rick and K. Warren, when they got married, one of the things they told themselves is that for every year, every year that they are married, they are going to give additional percent to their tithe. So you know what that means. First anniversary, their tithe increased to 11%. Second anniversary, it increased to 12%. Third anniversary, it increased to 13%. After over 20 years of doing that faithfully, the Lord gave him the revelation to write the book that he wrote, which is a world changer. And after he had written that book, he made so much money that he declared that they should go and bring the account of the church where he was serving. And they brought the account of the church and he calculated all the money he has ever received from the church. Decades of years, at least not one decade, not two decades, they calculated the whole thing and he wrote a check. He said, I'm paying back everything that I've ever collected. <laughs> and he said, in addition, I'm still continuing. I'm sure by the time himself and his wife have been married for 30 years, that man will be paying 40% of his income to God. That's the direction. That's the direction. It is not in our interest not to be talking about money in the church. It's going to slow down the preaching of the gospel. I think the challenge to us as leaders of the church is that those monies are used for the propagation of the gospel. They are used to enlarge the church. It's one of the devil's strategy to say don't talk about prosperity. Because if you don't talk about prosperity, how will you preach? It's not possible. He wants to use it to slow us down. I think rather than saying don't preach prosperity, we should tell people that you should preach prosperity for the right reasons. For the right reasons. So that we will not be paupers. So that we can be rich and our life will become a testimony for people to come and serve our God. You know, one man who is very rich, I know how he began to call the man of God. He said, I can't come openly. But I know that this your God is real. Is real. And our God is real. If you will not do any other thing, if you don't remember anything that I've said today, remember number one, that is a priority. We must prioritize it. It is urgent. Time is running out. We don't have time again. Number two, we must pray. Pray. And there are so many avenues. Pray. One, pray for more givers. And I'm sure while you are doing that, you yourself, you are giving. Pray for more people to be dedicated to preaching the gospel. And I'm sure while you are doing that, you yourself, you are making yourself available. As much as you can, at least pay tight of your time. No matter how busy you are, ensure you pay tight of your time. So, in, in a week, 2.4 times 7. How many hours is that in a week? That's plenty hours. And you know what? Today, if we hold service and we are spending two hours, people start looking at their time. What are they doing? What are they still doing? If you calculate 2.4 hours times 7, what do you get? That's almost, uh, almost 20 hours. 20 hours in a week. The Lord is going to help us in Jesus' name. As I round up this message, and then we move on, I want you to know that it is a priority. The Bible says Paul was talking in 2 Corinthians 8 5, testifying about the Macedonia church as a roundup. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. God's first interest is yourself, He's interested in you first, not your money. It's you first. Because when God gets you, you get your money. If you serve him wholeheartedly, money will not mean much to you to give unto him. 
In Proverbs 23, verse 26, he said, My son, give me your heart and let my, your eyes observe my ways. As I round up, if you are there, you are saying, Lord, I want to give my soul to the Lord. You are even inside the church already. What is delaying you? From say, Father, receive me. Because G the Son of God was sent to ensure that the works of the devil are destroyed. And the principal work of the devil is this thing we are talking about. To hold men in bondage, hold women in bondage, make them to spend on what is not. Make them to waste their lives. Any life that is not lived to the pleasure of God is a wasted life. I like to pray for people who want from today, you want to make a commitment to pray that the kingdom of God will come. You want to make a commitment to giving for the enlargement of the kingdom. And you want to make a commitment to committing time committing quality time to the enlargement of God's kingdom. And I want to assure you, as you do it, watch out for what God is going to do. If you belong to any of these groups, wherever you are, just take a rise. You want to say, Lord, from today, you may have been doing it before. I just want us to renew this covenant and say, Lord, it's a covenant that I've made with you that so, so, so a month, I'm going to be giving for the enlargement of your kingdom. It could be a percentage of your income. It could be an amount. Or you are saying, Lord, this time of prayer, I'm setting it aside. God wants to give you a new strength. He wants to renew your strength. Because it's a time of restoration and renewal. It's a time of restoration and recovery. Maybe you have, you have started collapsing it. And God wants to renew it. Just rise up, begin to talk to God. Say, Father, I know I cannot do anything without you. Say, for without me, you can do nothing. Just talk to God where you are. Say, Father, I want to commit to so 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 amount for missions. I want to commit to so 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 amount for the enlargement of your kingdom. I want to commit to so 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 number of hours of intercessory prayers for mission and for the enlargement of your kingdom. I want to commit to a number of hours to preach the gospel, to reach the lost. Father, we thank you for this, your people. We give you praise because Jesus said, the Father has not left me alone. He that sent me is with me because I do always those things that please him. I pray for these ones. Father, give them a new strength in the name of Jesus. It shall not be by power. It shall not be by might. It shall be by your spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Pour them a new oil in the mighty name of Jesus. Renew their strength financially in the name of Jesus. Renew their strength physically in the name of Jesus. Renew their strength in the place of prayer in the name of Jesus. Renew their strength in the place of service in the mighty name of Jesus. They will not fail. They will not falter. They will not be tired in the mighty name of Jesus. Through them, Father, your kingdom will be established here on earth. And as they serve you, Lord, you said there is no man who has given houses, who has given brothers, sisters, parents, and lambs for my sake and the kingdom's sake. You said, but they shall have in this war a hundredfold and in the world to come eternal life. I pray for these ones. Whatever they are committing to the enlightenment of your kingdom, let them have more than hundredfold return in the name of Jesus so that they can commit more to the enlargement of your kingdom. Thank you, Father, because you've had our prayers. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Nigeria, a nation of over 180 million people, the largest black nation on earth, struggles with its health wealth balance. Join the conversation at the 7th Annual Public Lecture at the Foursquare Gospel Church in Nigeria, tagged Health and Wealth, the 
Global Impact on Tuesday, 13th of October, 2020, by 11 a.m. Keynote speaker, Professor Isaac Adewale, Immediate Past Minister of Health of Nigeria, with imminent panelists, Chairman Mazi Sam Omabua, President Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, Chief Host, Reverend Sam Abueji, General Overseer of Foursquare Gospel Church in Nigeria. Connect on www.foursquare.org.ng or watch live on WAT TV, GSTV Channel 262, Go TV Channel 102, Star Time Channel 116, Pay TV Channel 275, Star Sound Channel 189, and Foursquare TV. Follow Foursquare NIGR on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. YouTube Foursquare NG. Mixland Foursquare in Nigeria. Don't miss it. Introducing McPherson University, an ambitious and innovative university situated in the peaceful settlement of Seriki Sotayo, Ogun State, Nigeria, providing an educationally outstanding experience for students. Established by Foursquare Gospel Church, McPherson University is driven by a desire to excel in high-quality teaching and research within a framework informed by values of integrity. We offer a range of courses including nursing science, accounting, banking and finance, business administration, mass communication, computer science, economics, marketing, biochemistry, microbiology, English language, international relations, history and international studies, and religious studies. At McPherson University, learning is truly innovative and creative. We have some of the best state-of-the-art educational facilities, 24-7 uninterrupted power supply, and excellent studio support system. Our products are excelling in their chosen fields and already making a difference globally. Welcome to McPherson University, the home of champions. Here we build people of excellence who will give service with integrity and dedication. Visit www.mcu.edu.ng What a wonderful time we have had today, brothers and sisters. I want to really bless God that you have been touched by this telecast. Two things I want to do. First, I'd like to pray for as many as want to commit their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 37 verse 5 says, Commit yourself to the Lord. Trust in Him and He will help you. I want us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all those who have made up their mind to receive you as their Lord and Savior. I ask, Lord, that you will forgive their sins in the name of Jesus. You will cause their names to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them a brand new life in Jesus' name. It's done. The Bible says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You are saved. Uh, secondly, I'd like to pray for as many as have one challenge or the other in their lives. Whatever it is that is confronting you, I'd like to pray for you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for today. Thank you for the privilege to approach you. Say, let us call therefore come boldly 
before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. I commit as many as have been faced with health challenges unto you. Cancer, migraine, high blood pressure, whatever it is, it has a name. And the Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every kneel must bow. And therefore command all sicknesses and illnesses to bow in the name of Jesus. I say, be gone, be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you very much for being part of this telecast. I'll see you next time.